This is going to be a challenge. This is uh, the second 40 breeder I bought on offer up for, I think, $35. There's the first one. This one's got Bob and Carol, the breeding albino crebensis in it. And there they are. But here's the deal. This uh, is this workbench. And you can see here how it's separating and it's sort of torquing and twisting away. So the front is not in line with the back. All right, it needs to go over half an inch or so. And so what I'm going and I'm afraid that eventually, I don't, I don't know if this happened since I put the tanks on it or if it was that way and I never noticed it, but 40 gallons of water, that's 320 pounds all by itself. Uh, so there's not 40 gallons of water in here. There might be, I don't know, 30 plus. So that's still 250 pounds plus what? hundred pounds of gravel and rock. So I'm going to, and I don't want to take all the fish out. I have to take the whole tank apart to do that, but I'm going to take the water down to, I guess about here. That'd be about 75% of the water. And what I'm going to do is save most of it in that bucket and then top it off in these uh, five gallon buckets I got so I can save most of the water. Then I'm gonna use that two by four, this is the plan, and put it under the table from the concrete up and kick the bottom over um, to sort of jack up the, uh, the, the table, the bench, and then I'm gonna go around the side of the fridge. So I had to pull this out, pull those screws, tighten it up, put fresh screws in, um, and then uh, figure out, a, a, maybe maybe just even put a sheet of plywood from that two by four up to the top of the workbench, just sort of, and then screw it into the, uh, uh, to that top two by four, just to uh, help give it, you know, it acts like a shear wall or shear panel like they use in construction. Because what the plan is, what I was gonna do was just make a, a, a two by four square, two by four frame that sets right on the concrete and then cover it with plywood and set another 40 gallon breeder on top of that. Uh, and use that uh, uh, more of a farm tank. And the, obviously fish will go in it as well. But that is the plan. Water's about halfway down. The rest will go into those five gallon buckets. Uh, unfortunately, all my other five gallon buckets have sand and gravel and rocks in them. But what I'm gonna do now is put you on time lapse. I've never done that before. So we'll see how that works out. It should be fun. And then that'll get me through uh, propping up this end. Turns out this end over here is actually a little bit higher according to the level. So it could actually go down a little bit. I'm not too concerned about that, but what I am concerned about is uh, tightening this up right here and ultimately tightening that up right here and pushing this post in. All right, so here we are. Um, we're down about 75% and the fish are freaking a little bit. Hopefully there's enough water front and back for these guys. Uh, while I was doing it, I was weeding out guppy grass because I put guppy grass in here and I've got hornwort and I'd rather have just the hornwort. And across the surface is all this stuff called Rickia water spangles. It's a cool little floater. Um, also got it on my eBay page. I'll leave a link down below. And now what I'm going to do is, like I said, I was going to put you on a, a time lapse and we'll see how that plays out. And hopefully we'll get this project done relatively quickly.
that looks like it cinched it up really nice. Um, I feel a lot better about it than I did. Then I'll put a couple more screws in the bottom there, tighten that up a little bit. But I am a lot happier with this. And I'm going to pop that brace out. It's going to drop a little bit because it lifted the leg off the concrete just here. But you can see the mark on the concrete, how much it moved it over by twisting it and tightening that up. So that's exactly what I wanted. Uh, so that way, that frame that goes under it will be more squarish than what it was. It's going to be some sort of odd trapezoidal thing. All right, so there we are. There's the old mark. And I don't have a long look. Well, I got this two by four. So that's going to be a little more squarish that this frame will slide in there. That's the idea. I don't want to screw it to the sides. I just want to slide it in. I might have to shim it to make it level because I don't know how level the floor is. But there will be, like I said, one there and then one on that side. Probably one in the middle, maybe two. And then one across the back, one across the front. And what I used were these two and a half inch deck screws. They're, I don't know, they're coated with something. Should inhibit rust. They're made for exterior use. So anyway, that's that looks considerably better than it did. And that, yeah, I don't know, that really didn't seem to pull it in much, but uh, I don't think those deck screws will pull out. There's still a couple other things in there that I have to pull those out to get that to tighten up. And I think it's probably going to be okay. Um, so anyway, and again, I might put that piece of plywood across the back. This wasn't cut in very well because you can see how much it sticks out. Uh, the one in the back's flush. Ideally, this one should be flush too, but that's not going to happen. I'm not taking that much apart. I don't, I don't trust that, especially with this weight on it. We are starting from scratch, and if I'd have seen that, I might have done it. But I didn't, so I'm not. So anyway, like that. Um, and now I can put the water back in the tank here. So that was not too tough of a project. Now all I got to do, that's kind of it. So the next next step is building this deck to go down here. That'll hold a 40 breeder for another farm tank. Okay, so the next step is to build the platform that that 40 gallon breeder is going to sit on down here underneath the workbench that we repaired we tightened up that gap that was right in here the whole four by four post was twisting and you can see how far when i straightened it out how far it moved over let me uh, use my tape measure it moved over from there over to here so maybe an inch and a quarter so it turns out that measurements across the width left to right in the front are 45 and a half and in the back are 47. So nothing about this is square. The distance from front to back here is 26 inches and on this side from front to back is 25 inches and I think what's going on is that one is setting further back. So what I'm going to do is use the smaller dimension Again, I'm not tying it to the legs. I'm just going to slide it in. And so I'm just going to build the box or the, or the platform square and we'll go with 45. And I think it's actually about 45 and a half. I want it to be a little loose so it'll slide in and out easily. Yeah, so 24 inches ought to do. And there will be some big, weird, uneven gap in the rear, which is probably all right. And on this side, the platform should line up about there. And then on this side, it'll line up just short uh, there. So it'll be more on the inside.
So I thought before I get too far, put that top on it. You should probably see how this is going to fit. It's all right. It's just going to slide in there. Let's see. That looks pretty level. It's not perfect, but neither is the countertop up here. Let's swing it around this way. And that's not going to work. But this will work. And that's pretty close. It's not too far off. Here we go. I think that's gonna do. Sticking out a little bit on that side. There's a little piece of, of wood back there. I'll fish that out later, make it flush up. Um, so this this was all scrap lumber. That piece of plywood, I don't know if you noticed, had drywall mud all over it. And the hole was from a floor flange because it was covering a pit in the concrete slab in our remodel, that's where the floor flange for the toilet came up so we could still have a temporary toilet. Um, and all I had to do was trim a little bit of an end off. So the two by fours were all scrap. So the whole thing cost zero. Uh, I've got boxes of deck screws. I used uh, three and a half inch deck screws into the two by fours, probably overkill. Two and a half might have been good. I've got those, three would have been better. Three and a half, I thought, well, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. And excess is best, right? What one will do, three will do better. Um, and then uh, uh, around the, the plywood were just inch and a quarter screws. And I didn't, you know, there's just a few in there. All it's got to do is hold it in place so it doesn't slide around. And then what I'll do, up here I've got this uh, insulated styrofoam. It's foil, foil on both sides. So I've got a big chunk of that still, so I'll cut a piece of that to fit under the 40 gallon when it goes in here, and that'll be it. It'll be all ready to go. And so the next step is to get that 40 gallon breeder, and probably uh, where else? Petco. Uh, they've got that 50% off sale constantly. So what that really tells you is that's all the tanks are really worth. Um, so they're marked down. Uh, God, I think they were 60 bucks or 65 bucks. So what's that? 65 times two is 130. So they're marked down from 130 to 65 dollars, I think, uh, plus tax. Can't forget whatever governor you have to live with. So anyway, there we go. Well, this is the next stage. I got that 40 gallon breeder today from Petco, the 50% off deal. Uh, so it was 65 bucks and you know how that works. They mark them way up and so they can mark them down. Um, but I'm gonna, I had a neighbor help me bring it in, but I'm gonna cut a piece of that uh, foil covered, really dense insulation styrofoam and then slide that underneath it um, just cause. And then we'll build it. All right, so here's the next step. I bought a four by eight sheet of this foil covered half inch thick foam insulation, a really dense foam. And I cut a piece, uh, I think it's 18 inches by uh, 36 inches to fit underneath this tank. And that'll be next. I'll just have to slide that in and then we'll move on.